Joined today by Roger Melko of originally of the Paw, Manitoba. That's right. And now lives out in Waterloo. Yep. Roger, can you tell us the big news? Well, two big things just happened. Number one, I have, was the uh, the first ice shack out on Clearwater Lake oh. uh, this year. But number two, I I won the Canadian Association of Physics uh, Physicists uh, what's called the Brockhouse Medal this year. Yeah. Can you describe? Uh, the reason why you received that uh, uh, distinction. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, so the, the Brockhaus Medal is a medal uh, which is given by uh, our professional association. So we're physicists, you know, working physicists who work at universities and industry and so on. Uh, and every year there's sort of a number of academic awards uh, that they, uh, you know, that we give within the community, I would say. Um, and so this year I was the recipient of the award that sort of recognizes, um, you know, research in materials uh, and what we call condensed matter physics. Okay. So it's basically a research award. Is, uh, can you put this into layman's terms, like the kind of work that you do, or is it? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so, uh, so I'm a physicist by training. Uh, you know, I left the Paw Manitoba and I guess it was 1995-ish, uh, went to university and undergrad in, uh, in University of Waterloo down in Ontario. Uh, and I entered the physics, uh, you know, department there and sort of, uh, I got enamored of, uh, all things related to physics and physics research and so on. Uh, and so, uh, part of my journey, uh, I guess in terms of research, uh, was, uh, using computer simulations to simulate uh, you know, the fundamental physics of, of ma materials and matter, I would say. Okay. Uh, and so over the years, I spend a lot of time, you know, burning a lot of CPU hours trying to figure out exactly what are, you know, what makes materials tick, you know, sort of uh, how we uh, learn new physics from looking at systems of matter uh, and, and so on. So what's the practical use of your research? Like, how is it going to be further applied? Like, can you give us an example? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it is a, you know, it is a bit of a tough question because a lot of physics uh, research uh, is, I would say, sort of ahead of the curve in terms of application. So we really look at what's, what's, you know, what's fundamental about our theories and how those theories apply to the universe. And the part, the corner of the universe I look at is what goes on in matter and materials, which surround us kind of in our everyday life. You know, I'm talking about, you know, ice and water and, and you know, uh, metals and insulators and ceramics and, and all of these types of things. Uh, so, but that being said, even though we do work on fundamental physics, uh, there are a lot of applications in the near term that we hope will come out of our research. For example, new types of uh, conductors, you know, so uh, superconducting uh, materials are one thing we work on quite a bit. Superconductors mm -hmm. could be used to uh, increase uh, the efficiency of power generation and power transmission. So, you know, if you had a hydro dam and you had, um, you know, superconducting, uh, you know, basically wires connecting it, uh, you know, down to from the north to the south, mm -hmm. these would be lossless transmission wires. Okay. It's just one example of sort of the idea uh, behind the research. Okay. So now they don't hand these metals out to just anybody. So this is pretty <laughs> substantial. I looked at the the previous year's uh, recipients and like you you you're in small company here with with uh, some pretty big minds. How does uh, how does it feel to be one nominated but two be the award recipient? It's certainly humbling. I mean, when I was a young student uh, learning physics uh, and and getting into the field of condensed matter materials physics, uh, you know, I I, I I was aware of this award and I was aware of the professors and scientists sort of that were on this list of award recipients uh, mm -hmm. throughout the years. Uh, and so I never imagined I would be, you know, counted among that list. Uh, so it's certainly a humbling experience. Uh, but I, you know, it's, it's, I've been very fortunate to work with some of those past recipients in our kind of Canadian physics community. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's, it's just very, uh, very, it's just an honor. So when did you find out? Funny story. I was, uh, I believe I was, in Toronto, uh, working with one of my colleagues, Juan Kereskija, who did a lot of this work with me, and he's an artificial intelligence expert. Okay. We were having a, having a pint after work, and my phone rang. And, and kind of like when you called me, Ralph, I was like, you know, like, who, who calls me anymore? And yeah. I actually didn't answer the phone. It was a number from Calgary. 
Uh, but then I immediately received an email uh, and, you know, it's from uh, the ex-president of the Canadian Association of Physicists notifying me about my award. <laughs> he said, sorry, I can't get hold of you. <laughs> so <laughs> apologies. <laughs> okay. So is there an actual metal metal or is this uh, just it's... Uh... There is a metal. And uh, yeah, there, it's, uh, you know, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Okay. They're, have they, mailing it to me, so. they, they're only mailing it to you? They're, they're mailing it to the Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics where okay. I work part time. Okay. And, uh, so they're going to have a... An investiture ceremony there at some point in the future? I hope so, yeah. I can't yeah. wait to see. Uh, uh, other th otherwise, I think they might just melt the metal down for chalk holders, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, when you do get that metal and there's an investiture ceremony, tell your colleague or whoever's taking the photos, we'd love some for the paper. I shall. Uh, so, now you're a hometown boy, That's born right. and raised in the pot. Absolutely. And now uh, I know you're a recipient of the Governor General's Awards right. uh, for Education for, uh, when you were back in MBCI. Was there any uh, inspirational teacher that, uh, you know, you can think of or you want to make mention of? You know, MBCI was, uh, you know, my experience at MBCI was really, I guess, um, the experiment, experience that led me into physics, uh, you know, as a, as a career. Um, so, you know, a lot of great stuff happened uh, to me when I was in high school. I think probably the most important, you know, we, I had great mathematics, uh, you know, teachers. Remember, uh, Jeff Smith was a great teacher. Uh, but in kind of the last couple of years of high school, there was a trio of, of science teachers, which were very influential for me. Uh, so one was Terry Dugan, the chemistry teacher who okay. used to live, you know, just in the other bay okay. up here. Terry Dugan, I had basically known since elementary school when he taught the Challengers math program. Mm -hmm. I remember he was the first person that introduced me to, to pie. You know, yeah, the, yeah, the concept, yeah. Uh, of pie. Uh, Richard Hebert, who ran a uh, the biology class, like I'm not a biologist, but he had probably the most modern uh, type, you know, of, of biology class you can imagine in, in the 90s. It, it really, it seemed like a first year university lecture, um, I remember uh, when I was in that class. And the, and the third was Mike Cull, of course, my physics teacher. Okay. You know, yeah. So basically, uh, in that class, sitting there, you know, with overhead projectors, you know, Mike Cull writing on you know, overhead slides and putting them, putting them up there. That's really how I, I, I sort of uh, learned physics initially um, you know, here, right here at MCI. So for those that don't know, who are your parents? My parents are uh, Lawrence and Jean Melko, who okay. have a long history of, uh, you know, living uh, and working and so on out here at Clearwater Lake. Okay. I am now and have a cabin about five or six doors down. Good. So you're only back here then for the holiday season? I'm back. Yeah, you know, I come here periodically. Um, uh, you know, I try to get up here for the holidays or for, you know, when ice fishing okay. might start. So, Good. you know, it's, I'm back and forth quite a bit. Okay. So, uh, do you want to do a shout out to anybody else in the community, old friends or any other family? You know, there's so many, you know, I love, I love the pod. I love coming back. Uh, there's so many positive, uh, aspects of, of sort of, you know, growing up here. I was, I lived here until I was 18, mm -hmm. like literally until I moved away to do physics. Yeah. Uh, you know, one thing that was really influential, and I have my mother to thank for this, uh, was the Paul Public Library. Mm -hmm. So when I was uh, sort of a young pup, I was just following my mom around when she was doing kind of chores in town, you know, because my parents live out in Bachelor, mm -hmm. uh, bachelor Subdivision. Uh, I was probably avoiding some sort of manual labor that was going on you know, with my dad and my brothers, but so I would take. That's on. pretty extreme, you know, to avoid manual labor. Like, oh, I'm gonna go learn physics or something like this, so I can. <laughs> that's how I. That's certainly how I remember it. Yeah. So uh, you know, I so my my mom's an avid reader, and uh, you know, she would devour books and uh, of yeah. course pop into the library. Yeah. And so I'd be free to sort of run around and explore. Yeah. And you know the library here is great, and you know they have such a great collection of books that I can honestly say that you know just exploring the shelves in the Paul Public Library, uh, you know over the years is is probably the most uh, you know direct influence on my career because I really got into, uh, uh, among other things, science fiction, yeah. and so you know I discovered Arthur C. Clarke. And, and you know Isaac Asimov, and uh, I see some on my shelf here. Actually, yeah. my, I'm still reading science fiction. Good. Uh, but that was really something that uh, you know, kind of, I guess, opened up my imagination in terms of you know what the future would look like. You know how humans would live in the future, and how our technology would progress. And it's still, in some sense, a compass for me today. Wow, that's that's a uh, you know the Paul Public Library. You probably love to hear that. So that's great, man. Like <laughs> no, it's. Uh, Everybody comes to uh, their calling in life through different re reasons. So, uh, 
the last thing I want to mention here, Roger, is do you have a, any inspirational message to the youth of today that are growing up in the North? Absolutely. <clears throat> you know, um, it, it was a bit of a culture shock, I got to say, when I left here and I entered university in southwestern Ontario. Um, uh, and, you know, it was just because, you know, I, th I, I actually don't, I don't know why, you know, of course, we're, we're many, many miles removed from um, sort of like the Toronto Waterloo region and so on. Uh, but throughout my time there, I have met, you know, really exceptional people from the north, you know, all over Canada, uh, who have done similar things as I have, who have sort of, you know, left and uh, uh, gone to universities in the south and, and so on. Uh, and, and I guess one thing I find is, is um, sort of all of these northerners like us, you know, we, we, uh, we have a lot of tenacity. Uh, you know, I think many people have sort of overcome uh, sort of invisible barriers, uh, you know, uh, to get to their station in life. And I would just say to all the youths out there, especially, you know, in our, you know, fantastic, you know, uh, high schools and so on, uh, is that basically anything's possible. You know, uh, I certainly found it challenging to jump into first year uh, university classes in physics and math at the University of Waterloo. Uh, but it's certainly not an insurmountable insurmount challenge. And mm -hmm. I think essentially anyone, you know, who is receiving kind of an education like I did uh, up here in the park could follow, you know, really just follow their dreams in the way that I did uh, in, in sort of any institution. In, in and look at you now. And look at me now back in yeah. Clearwater Lake, you know. No, but, you know, th these are high honors you're being awarded. And I, I, I think on behalf of the entire community, uh, we, we'd like to salute you for... Uh, you know, your, your efforts in uh, these research fields that uh, honestly, like, you know, like I said, you know, they don't just hand these medals out to anybody. So congratulations and congratulations to your family. You've, you've done your, your family and your community proud and you've given some inspiration to the youth in the north. So thank you very much. Well, thank you. And thank you everyone here who supported me over the years. Yeah, there you know, you go. It's certainly very uh, important to have a support structure and people to kind of lean on. Uh, when, when you're doing something like this. So Are there any other colleagues maybe back in uh, uh, the University of Waterloo you want to shout out to or make thanks to? Or There's recognize? so many that I, uh, you know, I worry about leaving some out, but I will mention a few people. Uh, you know, Jim Brandon, who uh, was the undergraduate officer at the University of Waterloo, who first saw my application. Uh, and, and, you know, in when I first entered university in Ontario, uh, Ontario students had grade 13 in high school, so we yeah. only had grade 12 here. So I was missing a few courses, let me put it that way. Uh, and he really took a chance on me. He said, you know what, we saw this application from Northern Manitoba. You know, uh, uh, you, we took a chance, let, let you in the undergraduate program. And so, you know, he was the first person, I think, to really kind of uh, uh, be, be my champion, sort of, in some sense. Uh, so uh, big uh, shout out to him. Uh, all the other sort of research mentors I had on, you know, along the way, at the University of Waterloo, Michelle Gingra, who was my master's advisor, my PhD advisor in the U.S., Douglas Scalapino. You know, I did my my PhD down in University of California. Uh, but you know, those are my mentors. And but really, now that I'm I'm kind of at the mentorship stage, I just want to thank all of the younger students and postdoctoral fellows who I work with, who really drive all this research. So you know, when when you're awarded a medal like this, it's really a team effort. And you know, one person kind of gets recognized, but behind that person, again, is a big support structure. In my case, of a lot of young, uh, sort of inspirational uh, people from all over the world who perform this research with me. So thank you to everybody. Good, Roger. Okay, Roger Melko, hometown hero. Uh, Brock House Medal. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. Barack House Medal recipient for, from the Canadian Association of Physicists. Yep. Uh, and first trout pulled out of Clearwater well, Lake. Oh, yeah, that's that too. Absolutely. Yeah, Master yes. Angler, soon to be Master Angler. There Absolutely. you go. Okay, thank you very much, thank Roger. You, very you have much. a good day.